uh, he turned around and ended up drawing. And it seems like Irina had that same bug in her game. She was completely winning in her game against Nee. Uh, what do you what are your evaluation of this position? It seems like things have really turned against the five-time champ. Sure. I mean, and anything can happen. Um, Victoria has been playing pretty well the second half of the tournament. So, you know, I'm rooting for her. I'm also rooting for Tatev. Uh, at this point, I think a playoff is very likely tomorrow. Indeed. So this position, what about this game? This is a shocker to us, uh, but it looks like a fight. Used to be that Zatonsky was better, then all of a sudden she was worse. Looks like now she's evened out the game because she's going to somehow win this pawn. Are you surprised by this turn of events at the championships? It didn't look like Abrahamian had a chance, and he had two champions, nine-time champions between them in, in uh, Zatonsky and Crush, and now they're not winning the last game when it counted. Yeah, well, I mean, with these sorts of events, um, y you you never know what will happen. And Tatev was always, you know, at the top. You know, of course, ever there was a lot of buzz between Krush and Zatonsky, but she was always up there. So it comes as no surprise to me that, you know, she has a really good shot here. So your tournament is over. Uh, what do you do now in the next several months? Um, yeah, you know, it's uh, back to the real world. When you're playing in a <laughs> tournament, especially one like this, um, like the entire tournament consumes your life. And I know every chess player will be able to relate to the feeling that, you know, nothing exists except your routine in the tournament. And, you know, I've been avoiding the emails I've been getting about what I need to do to register for the bar and everything. So now I have to make sure that everything is in order there. I'm playing Chicago Open next, so in a few days. So, yeah, while I'm in chess mode, we'll see how that goes. And what else follows that? Yeah, well, Chicago Open, then I take my bar prep courses, um, take the bar July 30th, and then I have two and a half months off to travel. Maybe I'll play in tournaments in Europe, you know, train for millionaire chess, of course. Indeed. Of course, I had to get you to say that on the camera. <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, thanks so much. We enjoyed watching your enterprising play of the championships, and we wish you the best of luck in your chess career and, of course, with the bar. Okay, thanks so much, Maurice. FM Alyssa Melchina, after a good victory to close out the championship, ending up in the top half of the tournament, career woman and chess player. Not a bad combo. Entrepreneur. Yeah, that's right. Sublight, huh? I've got to go to our uh, key game of the round uh, between the two leaders, Akobian and, and uh, Alex. We've just seen this last move, F. We w we'll go back to this position. It was the move rook c5, by the way, that kept Letterman in the game. I thought that uh, he was actually seriously worse, rook c5. I thought that uh, white had to play a move like rook uh, down uh, to get behind the pawns, but th this pawn is really, really fast. Rook c5, very good move. Rook e6, king back, rook attacks uh, the b pawn. Rook a5, rook takes, rook takes, um, f5 now by var. And still, I like black's activity really a lot. I think, uh, you know, you want to play down. for a win, but you can overdo it very easily uh, here. Var's down to three minutes on the clock, though, for what it's worth. Okay, it's again, the practical le Lenderman. Lenderman. Yeah. Well, I mean, just to, just to give an example of how uh, things could really go wrong for white. If you go rook a5 and you go pawn hunting over here, well, e2, rook check, king here, and guess what? This is a sudden queen uh, about to make an apparent appearance in the position. I don't say it's a dead win or anything like that. Um, white has possibilities of fortresses, but the uh, tide would sure have turned if black is able to promote. Meanwhile, we, I thought you were also going to take us to the Kamsky for Dell game, because that game looks crazy. Oh. The, the, I mean, there were a lot of sacrifices in that game. Right. But um, again, so in this position, uh, Lenderman to play, and um, I, this one is still very hard to call. I think Lenderman should, should ease back on the throttle a bit and start thinking, maybe I should draw this game, because it could easily go wrong. He, he's, he's, still, he's still pressing for the win. He has played the move A5. And a version of Colby, and of course, uh, down to three minutes on the clock, snuck in a stare, though, as he hovers over. Well, king, king E3. He hovers E3. over his king to play king E3, 
And he hasn't played it. Instead, he played. I thought he was hovering over his king. Uh, but I thought apparently, he was a, it was his rook. He played rook to a4 instead. Rook he, to a4. So he got behind the pawn. Okay. I. And now also menacing at rook a2 check. Uh, going over here to snabble a pawn over here as well. Snabble? Snabble. Did you just make up that word? Uh, no, my wife Yvette. She Maybe likes snabbles. Give credit where credit's due. I know. She was the originator. So still, all the play for. I think all three results are possible still in this game between Lenderman and Nicobian. Perhaps Lenderman has had the upper hand most of the way, but it's very easy to overplay his hand here. And I think Var is feeling very confident despite the big disadvantage he has on the clock. And let's look at some messy <coughs> stuff going on in Gata Kamsky Josh all right. So let's back up a few moves there. Okay. It so looks like uh, Gata Kamsky. We were more or less around uh, these parts, and I thought that uh, Gata had the better of it. Gata played bishop to g4, activating his bishop first. Before playing the move f2, f3, he wanted to make sure he had an active bishop. a3, past pawns must be pushed and all that. Uh, c4, c5, attacking the bishop. a2. Just ignoring the pawn takes g6 threat, perhaps. Wow. Looks like queen b1, there's a queen b1 in the position. Exactly. You can't take the bishop queen d1. Queen b1 threatening uh, just in a1 equals queen, and the move rook c1, which would ordinarily save. Remember that Fisher position we yes. looked at earlier, where Wyshevsky missed the idea queen b4 to e1? Right. Well, in this case, rook c1 um, is insufficient because of queen takes e4. Precisely. So, uh, so just uh, b a1 equals queen, or queen takes f1, both in the position. To which Gata played f2, f3, protecting his queen uh, in, so that he could meet a move like queen b1 with the move rook c1, which is what he wanted to do. And after f2, f3, bishop dropped back to b8 and bang, rook takes a2, and it looks like Gata's just... He got a pawn? Gata's Gata? Gata's Gata's a pawn, and uh, that's a huge pawn, by the way, because that was going to be the source of, of Black's counterplay, and I can see White's rook sweeping into the position with rook b1 and rook a8, and Gata Kamsky, looking gr the defending champion, playing his best chess, uh, for the final game, final round here in round 11 of the U.S. Championships. He looks, this is the God of Kamsky that we knew and expected uh, when he came here to defend his, his championship, undefeated throughout the tournament and looking very, very good. F3, a really cool move. I Love it. Just simple chess, right? F hey, F3 has been kind of a big move today, right? Yes. You mentioned F3 earlier, a similar quiet move. Right. Um, that didn't turn out quite as amazing. But meanwhile, so got a Kamsky really on top. Meanwhile, what's going on in our crucial game for the women's championship between me and Crush, as it looks like the Tonski might be headed to a draw. The only way we don't see a playoff is if Irina Crush wins this game. Right, and she has played the move Rook E3. And Victoria, I actually thought that Victoria had the upper hand here. She could probably go into a drawn rook and pawn endgame by simply taking and doing something like C5. I wonder if she's thinking about winning, though. I, I, I just sometimes I have my doubts. Maurice Ashley, what do you think? Uh, it's all Victoria. No draw. Forget that. She has a great position. There's no reason to accept a draw in this position because it's her advantage right now, particularly after the last move by Irina Crush. In this position, Irina played the move rook to e3. I'll just point out a nice little variation. If she had played rook to e2, that looks kind of natural, right? Wrong. Knight to h3, check. And after any king move, let's go to, uh, let's go to f6, for example. Now the move, knight to f4, and oops, you just dropped an exchange and the game. This game is now over past pawn rook. This guy's going to fall. The game is all for white. Instead, after knight f2, she played rook to e3, and now the computer is saying rook to d8. Start thinking about pushing this guy home. This rook can't get behind the pawn, so what happens if this advance happens? She always has uh, any trade she wants. This is completely under control. Nothing here. No improvement is possible. If you try to move rook to f3, then simply rook g2. And what can you do? Your position's semi-stuck. You might have to back your king up out of there and allow this pawn to go forward, maybe even allow a king move. Still not a win by any stretch, but 
The person with the advantage right now is white. She should just play a couple of solid moves, and the pressure will be on Irina to hold this game. We should note, however, that Irina does have 13 minutes on her clock to her opponent's five minutes, and that's going to be the critical point. If Victoria is going to go for the win, she's going to have to go for it in time pressure. So looks like you were right, Jen. They are going to end up in some kind of time pressure. At least Victoria is. It's up to Irina to keep a nice lead on the clock, keep that padding because she's definitely worse here, fighting for her life here at the U.S. Women's Championships. That's right, although you got to wonder, Victoria Nee, remember she took a draw against Tata Vabrahamia, two which was up in. two pawns. So I'm Lost wondering how much is she thinking, I'm playing a grandmaster that's the highest rated player in the tournament, it would be cool to get a draw from that dangerous position earlier, and how much is she thinking, I'm going to win this game? I have no idea. No, and at the moment, uh, I agree, it's a, a, a confidence thing. But if Victoria continues to play well, um, Arena is in trouble. She just has to find these moves, rook she didn't d8 and d8. She played rook f8 instead. Rook to f8. Okay, so that's a little bit more of a defensive move, but still not bad. I mean, rook f8 is basically saying you can't, I guess, oh, I guess you could actually play king f4. Um, but in any case, rook f8, I don't see exactly how arena is going to make progress on, on the king side. Maurice is saying everything is 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 blocked Actually, up yes that's a good move and yeah. that has a nasty little trick associated with it check this out yeah king f4 your move very yeah. natural looking move to be yeah. sure sure runs into d6 oops suddenly you can't <laughs> take this pawn because nice. your bishop is hanging right with check and what just happened <laughs> you lost dead. a piece <laughs> you lost a piece for no reason so rook f8 is controlling the position black's best move the is it seems like it's king to h6 not very attractive move right now and then the rook if it wants to if she decides to, she can move a rook over to c8 look at that threat rook to c6 you know what the big problem here is this bishop is not in play this bishop is frozen and only protected nothing is happening on this side for black and white in the meantime can start generating threats on the other side of the board rook c6 is a tough plan i mean if the rook, if this pawn becomes a, it becomes a, a pawn on c6, that's going to be serious. And even if she trades here, she can start thinking about this pawn, getting these guys down the board. This position is tricky, but she still has to find the moves. She still has to find the moves. Let's see what happens in the next three moves. Well, we're definitely going to keep our eyes closely on this one. Um, it's amazing that there's only five games left in the championship, and four of them are, de are decisive games for the playoffs and the championship. <laughs> so, good job, guys. Wow. Shout out to the players. Wow. The, the, the other one is Robson Ownership, which we, we won't look at because we just have to keep our eyes um, um, peeled on these, um, uh, these crucial games, games which are, right. are going to determine our tournament winners. By I the way, before we, 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 as we get a chance, and then things are heating up, a big shout out to everybody, yourself, Maurice, all the people at the St. Louis Chess Club, Tony, Joy Bray, Alex Marler, the Carol Jurecki, the chief arbiter, the staff of Lester's, the staff at the Hall of Fame, Sacrum everybody, and Bad our know, sponsors, really uh, Rex and Jeannie, uh, thank you all. And of course, our, our audience, uh, we do it for you. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun, and we hope that you will remember to join us for the entirety of the Synchro Cup. But yeah, as, as you were saying that closing, it made yeah. it sound like you were thinking you were going to get out of work No, tomorrow. no. You know, no, it's still no, no. possible. I want to come back. It's still I possible. Wanna... Irina and Anna could both lose, and um, it, Lenderman or, or Kobe could, could win. And then we could just have two champions. The, That's true. The chances are probably like less than 1%, though. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm kind of looking forward to a playoff. I'm already I'm, excited about a playoff, actually. I'm saying there is a chance. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, not a high one, though. So, how about Anna Zakonsky? Okay. Well, first of all, she I has guess captured that a pawn that she was going after, and that variation that you pointed out. But meanwhile, Katarina's pawn's going pretty fast. Okay. I just was looking at the Lenderman game. Nothing has happened since the last move, Rook A6. So Alex Lenderman on move. Uh, I'm bringing up the Zatonsky game now. Knight takes. Look at that. Four versus two majority on the king side. Past a pawn over here. I'm just going to say, boldly state the obvious. I think white uh, is in time to draw. 
also because this pawn is so, this a pawn is so, um, how do you say, uh, on the edge of the board, right? After a situation like this, one of Black's pieces. Outside pass pawn, is that yes, what you're Yes, thank you so much, thank you so very much. Uh, one of Black's pieces is going to be tied down to keeping that a pawn under control. In the meanwhile, Black won't have enough uh, to force her four versus two majority. We have to keep our king over there. We need to make exactly. sure not to, to um, stretch our king away and fall into something like g4 with the idea of takes on g4 and f3. Yeah. And suddenly, yeah. what uh, happened? Uh, the pawn breakthrough. So That's I'm looking right. at a draw in this game. Uh, much more opportunity, I think, for uh, something good or bad to happen, depending upon your point of view, in the crush game. Agreed. And so you think it's much more likely to have a decisive result in that game one way or the other? One way or the other, and even though, objectively speaking, Arena should be playing for a draw, I'm sure she's hoping, 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 counting on a mistake by Victoria. Because That's right, and she uh, needs Victoria, she is, she is spending a lot of time at this moment. She's kind of getting down. Remember, she started this move with 15 minutes, three times as much time as Victoria, and now she's creeping down to equalizing the time situation. Wow. Actually, guys, right now I'm looking at the computer's options, and it's saying there's only one move for black. That's it. Everything else loses, which is incredible to think about right now because you know Irina is thinking, what can I do here? What can I do? The problem is this cluster. It's just nasty. You've got to figure out a way to unravel. So the move king h6 is actually the only move. Anything else is failure. Anything else creates a horrible position for you, and you need to make sure you don't fall into some nasty tricks. A move like king h4, for example, you know, that looks kind of a normal move, but after rook check, the king has to go back. Suddenly, this knight check, you can't touch it because the rook is protecting a nasty pin. The king goes, and now another knight move, and where did this knight come from? It's in the game, attacking everything. This rook is under control. You try to drop back, pawn up to d6. This threat of knight to d5 suddenly is on the board. And what are you supposed to do to, to keep the game going? Here, knight goes in. Very powerful position. Now, it's not easy to calculate any of this. I mean, this just, it's not clear who's winning, who might be, be losing. What, what is the situation here? Very tough for black, however, to make the right moves. This b pawn is about to drop. This d pawn is quite strong. The king is exposed. The rook's under attack. Bishop is still pinned. So what is she going to do? She's in a very nasty situation. Let's see if, we, if she has finally moved. The worst part is that her time situation is so bad. And that took a while to push. And she has, she has found the only move of all the moves that keep her in the game. Kudos to her as a GM showing her strength. She found the only move in the position, king to h6 to try to bring the king back. This doesn't mean anything, though. She's still much worse. And you know how hard it is to go from easily winning to, okay, it's equal, to, oh, my goodness, I am probably losing this position. That is hard to control your internal swings. But she is a practical player. She's been around the block. She knows her opponent's still going to have to find the moves. And it looks as though Victoria Nee is trying to stay solid in the position. She's played a move rook to f7, which is frowned upon by the computer in this position. This is not the optimal move, not making any progress, showing that she just wants to be somewhat defensive with her move. She needs to be aggressive here, swing her rook over, but now keeping her rook there, she's thinking this pawn is dangerous. Let me control it. The clock times, guys, 448, it seems, for Nee, at least on my board here, six minutes for crush. Harder to play, though, for the black pieces, so she's going to have to be very careful. Guys? Wow. Agreed. I mean, the knight is always a little bit more fun to play with in time <laughs> pressure, but I don't. I just don't think, again, I don't think he's playing for a win. I think she's thinking, like, oh, it would be cool if I, of course, if a, if a, if a trick presents itself, she's going to pounce, but I don't think she's thinking in her head, I'm better and I'm going to crush, crush. Absolutely. And that's rook, rook, rook f7 is indicative of that. Rook c8, as Maurice pointed out, playing rook c6, that's an obvious statement, I'm playing for a win. Rook f7 is kind of a statement, I'm playing for a draw. Maurice. Guys, we know something that Irina Crush may or may not know, though. Has she looked at the game between Zatonsky uh, uh, and Nemkova? Because, Probably not. Because if she hasn't, if she's been rooted to the board, she might be thinking, draw is not enough. I have to play for a win. When, in fact, a draw would be more than enough right now for her to go into a playoffs. And if Good she starts point. playing for a win, 
she might blow the game, end up losing. So I imagine she must have at least Glance jogged over wrong. to glance at, at that result. You know, what happened over there? I think we, we can expect that she must have done that so that she could come to the board and know what is needed in this competitive situation. I, I think that all depends on whether or not she got up on move 40 to get a drink of water mm. or something. Because even at that point, it was clear that Datonsky was not winning her game. Exactly. So if she did that, then she's in fine shape. But after she after move 40, she sunk right back into the game, and she's just in a zone. Mm -hmm. And for the most part in this position, it's all about finding good moves. I don't think... I don't think she has a moment yet where it's uh, like some floor straw and she has to reject it. But look at the clock times. If you may, uh, take a look at the clock less times. She has less time again than Victoria for the first time right. in the game. Well, actually. I mean, for the second time, sorry. Yes, but the, the first time, time in this time control, and we saw that when that happened in last time control, you got to credit Crush. When she does get into time pressure, at least you can say it's logical because it usually means she's in some trouble. Mm -hmm. So some of the other players seem to get into gratuitous time pressure. Irene, on the other hand, it seems like She's got a it's reason, a signal. So, yeah. Although, of course, I know how you feel about the one-second <laughs> countdown. Ah. And she hasn't gotten that close um, in this game. Um, we, we have gotten some great comments from our, our listeners um, in different languages. So we welcome you all over the world watching these games. Um, Daniel Wrench says, could this be a repeat of Carlson Kramnik at Candidates 2013? Right. Will both Crush and Zatonsky lose backing into the tie for first? I don't think that's going to happen, but it's amazing that we're even close to that because compared well, to the candidates where even if the favorites lost, everyone is more tightly packed. Here, yeah. we're dealing with players which are a couple hundred points higher rated. Right. So we never could have expected that. And by the way, Abri uh, Tatiev has already won. So in case both players lose, we have a new U.S. champion in Tatiev. That's so right. So they can't back the way. Uh, they could back their way into a playoff with draws apiece. By the way, I just took a quick glance at the game of Gada Kamsky's. He's dominating. Yes, he's, he's going to win, He's I going to I win mean, 100%. That, I think that F3 move was a very pretty idea. You know, Fridell had all the tactics worked out, but missed the quiet move. Right. So a very That sweet. covered everything on the D4 uh, pawn. And we've so. got a comment coming in in Russian. So I, <laughs> I popped it into Google Translate. I did study Russian for like a couple semesters in college, but it was insufficient. <laughs> and it says, in the U.S. Chess Champs broadcast, the commentators have chess level and own profession presenter, the combination which we do not have. I love that translation. <laughs> I, it definitely sounds like a compliment. Yeah, it does sound like <laughs> a mean, compliment. The combination which we do not have. Google, Google could juice up that translation a bit to say, you know, a little bit more. But thank no, you. No, it says thank the you. own profession presenter. I like that. Okay, very nice. Very nice. I think they're trying to say that we're professional and we don't suck at chess also. So. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> not completely. <laughs> not completely. But very, okay, uh, what has happened after Rook F7? Don't tell me that uh, Rina has gone into a deep No, she thing. hasn't. She played Rook to E2, actually, after Rook to F7. So, so Rook E2 has night. been. And now Victoria E going under, under, about to be under three minutes on the clock. Oh, my. So d dangerous situation for Victoria E. And I think that's why Tatev was not so confident. You know, of course, she didn't want to jinx herself if that actually exists. So she didn't want to say, yeah, this game's definitely not going to be a win for Irina. But, uh, but, but doesn't rookie two encourage the move knight d3? Totally. Uh, bringing the knight, uh, the, the f4 square is the juicy square because, of course, that not a, that's forking two rooks. And don't forget that that rook on g6 is critical to the defense of the pawn on b6. So if uh, Arena decided that she wanted to trade rooks, she probably wouldn't be happy with the result, which would mean the loss of her b6 pawn, as well as the double threat of knight f4 check. So uh, knight d3 is screaming to be Automatic. played. Automatic. What is she doing? She's thinking about taking. That's taking on g4. I agree with you. That's I think she's crazy. taking because That's crazy she's in talk. time pressure and she's... In time pressure, people like to go for trades. So hopefully she'll make the right decision and she'll play in it. Well, not hopefully for Irina, but um, it's really interesting. We see this trade-itis comes into play when you don't have a lot of time in the clock. Not and only then, Jen, uh, in, in a lot of positions, just to simplify, but it, it's crazy that she's taking her time in this moment when knight d3 is just sitting on the board. In fact, the only move to stop knight f4 is, is uh, either king back to g5 or, or rook, rook back to e4. 
Which the more would be time, and she has played knight takes g4. I was going to say, the more time she thinks, the more likely she is just going to play this simplifying line. That and was as Yasser terrible. points out, after after f takes g4, which um, has been played, which has been played, you're predicting d6 to make uh, to force more trades. Well, exactly. I mean, Victoria. Uh, obviously, it's a confidence issue. She feels like she's up against a stronger rated player. She doesn't want to lose. Uh, so, she she played a simplifying line. Really, really. Oh my God! I have some news. What happened? This, is this right? Okay, um, we have to confirm a result here. But maybe we can get the webcam on Lender Minakobian because I'm hearing that there is actually a result in this game. Let's see. Is there actually a result in this game? It looks like VAR has won. It says that VAR has won on USChessChamps.com. Let's confirm that because that doesn't look like it, it should be the case. How is that possible? So we need to find out. I think maybe there is an error there. Definite so we're error. gonna find that out in a second and confirm that this game actually has been a draw, which seems they much more po likely. They posted I think they the wrong actually, kings on the board. It seems like they put the kings. So those of you watching on uschesschamps.com, hold your horses. <laughs> it doesn't seem like Verosian Kobian has won, and it has been switched to a draw. This game is a draw. <laughs> yeah. Kobe and Lenderin have drawn the game. I mean, the only way for that to have happened would be if Lenderin lost on time, and he was ahead of the clock and the entire was. game. And wow. still was. And you would have had so to hang some funny business mate, which wow. which is actually which is which is actually possible here. Come to think of it, well, whose move is it? Oh, it's black. It's uh, white's move. White would have had to do this, and then black do this, and then that, and then get mated, and then we say, okay, that's <laughs> completely ridiculous. But otherwise, come on, we, yes. we know no way in the world Lenderman's going to let that happen. So okay, obviously repetition, so and now they have a draw. We're in playoff mode, folks. Yeah. In tomorrow. fact, it looks like we're going to have that three-way playoff As with Dada Kamsky probably winning his game, and tiebreaks rule the day for him. He will see himself into the finals, despite the fact that when you look at the tournament, it feels like Virgin or Lenderman should have the better tie We're breaks. more deserving or whatever. Well, but I, they were leading the tournament more but, often. But, but in but, that direct encounter, Kodakamski has more points. But did I call it or what? I was the guy who said that uh, in case uh, of a draw and in case Kamsky won, that my money was on What Kamsky. do you want, a chicken wing? <laughs> oh, I want two. Dude, <laughs> I'm very deserving. Everybody's money in a, is on Kamsky now. Look at this <laughs> final setup. A Kobian and Lenderman now have to go to an Armageddon match. They were firmly in the lead. Now they have to limp out of that match, hoping just to, to qualify to play against Kamsky. That's just, that's just gimme for Kamsky. That's like him sitting back saying, please just suffer <laughs> so when you come to me, I'm going to get my hands on you. So, yeah, Komsky for choice if he wins this game, no question about it, it's going to be rough on the other players. That's right. And it's actually interesting. It looks, I mean, look at this last move he played, D5. I mean, It's totally overwhelming. It looks like he's going to win this game. Totally overwhelming, I'm afraid. And so uh, this is... He's material ahead. Two bishops. So this move position. D5 um, discovers the rook on A7, so that should force the move. Rook takes A1, and now we can't we can't sneak sneak in a discovery, but just after rook takes A1. Guess what? That pawn on C7 is simply massive. Uh, if, if you, you play queen, queen takes, takes D5, D5, queen takes D5, C takes D5. This bishop covering that square. Move like bishop b6, followed by hey, c7. we've seen the two bishops before in this tournament, haven't we? Right. And now even knight e6 trying to plug the square isn't working, because you can just take it and then play c7. And, we're, and we're threatening, actually, we're threatening to play both. Oh, we're both centering c takes b8 and c8 equals right. queen. But yeah. OK, another no, way to win. Another way to win so, a piece. Yeah. Either way. And one thing I'm going to be really curious to hear about Lenderman is if he knew about this tiebreak situation or not. Okay. So we're going to find out that soon. We've got Grandmaster Alexander Lenderman securing at least a tie for, for well, securing a tie for with between either two players or three players for first here at the U.S. Championship and guaranteeing him a playoff match tomorrow. Correct. And we're with Grandmaster Alexander Lenderman after his draw, critical draw in the last round against uh, a Kobian. Alex, welcome to the show. First of all, we saw you pressing. Did you decline a draw offer in the game? At one point, uh, at one point I did, yeah. I actually, I moved 30. I moved 30. Why did you decline right at that moment? It looked kind of evenish, that position. Yeah, but, you know, I feel like I have to do my maximum to try to do something, and uh, that's how Magnus Carlsen plays. So uh, I try to take example from the best. You, 
needed to push in this game. Now the result is a draw, and it seems that you will, with Komsky winning his game, have to go into a playoff. Did you realize that you would have to play a Kobe in, in the playoffs just to qualify to play against Komsky? No, I had no idea. I just went in there and battled, and, uh, you know, it's okay. It is what it is. What do you feel about your chances there? You have to play a Kobe in again in an Armageddon game uh, with its own crazy rules of bidding uh, for time. I have no idea how it works because uh, I didn't exactly plan on drawing this game. I, <laughs> But uh, now I'll have to r find out what it is and, uh, and, uh, and prepare for it. Are you disappointed with the result? Uh, well, uh, maybe a little bit, but uh, I did my best. I, I really did my best. Uh, I might have missed some opportunities. I might have been better at some point, but he, it looks like he's in great form. He played really well, it seemed to me. I don't know what the computer says, but I did the best I could, and, uh, but just couldn't quite do it. Well, thanks, Dan, for joining us, and we wish you good luck. You better go find out those rules. Thank you. <laughs> Real quickly. <laughs> Best Thanks. of luck in your final uh, matchups coming up. Thank you. Grandmaster Lendeman, who will play, it seems, a Armageddon game, an Armageddon game against Akobian to try to qualify to play against Godakomsky for the U.S. title. Guys? Yeah, and Thanks. interestingly, this Armageddon game, if, if Alex, you want to stay for a second, you can hear what it is. It's going to be an, a rapid Armageddon game, 45 minutes each on the clock. And you bid for how much time you're willing to sacrifice in order to get black and draw odds. So previous bids, we've had some something like like 20, 29 minutes, I believe, things around and that area. 20 minutes, I believe that uh, in last year's US Championship, Alejandro Ramirez bid like 20 minutes and got a bid 20 minutes, 19 seconds, or something like that. They were really, really, really close. And then the idea, of course, is that black has draw odds. White has to win. Right, exactly. So that should be interesting. And there's still an increment in that game as well, five second increment. Okay. So which and we'll confirm all of that later as as we now we know that we're gonna have an Armageddon game. Right. Because it's a three way tie. Exactly. So we must have an Armageddon game. And let me just shout out to Alex that I really want to congratulate him on his fantastic success, regardless and his of what. Uh, very, very much so. Very inspiring. Uh, he was the most decisive player in the tournament. He had lots of wins. He had some draws. But as he said, uh, he looks at Magnus Carlsen for inspiration, and he says, I want to be like Magnus. I love it. Magnus Carlsen at the Singfield Cup, inspiring the results of the U.S. Chess Championship at the same location exactly. just five months later. Exactly. Got to love it. So shout out to Magnus, and we'll be back on August 26th for the Singfield Cup. Exactly. Maurice, what's going on in knee crush? Big news, Crush has made some errors and now she is much worse, maybe losing. Look at this position, a huge position for White. Big initiative that she has created because of this advance to the D6 square. It, Crush has had to go on the defensive to try to save herself against his pawn uh, advance. And now the move D7 will be quite strong in this position. And Crush on the defensive suddenly, it looks as though she might be able to play this move. But look at this trick, check. Move your king over and boom, thank you very much for your rook. And suddenly a problem has occurred because as she goes for this pawn, king down, and she can't touch the pawn because this king and pawn ending is dead lost for her. So Crush in a bunch of trouble right now. She might even be losing the game. She has, she ticked to under a minute on the clock. Victoria Nee with a big, not that big a time advantage, but a time advantage. But what's going to happen? Who knows? But it looks as though the five-time champ is in a lot of trouble. Guys? A heart-stopping game. Victoria Nee doesn't have a lot of time. Actually, she's ticking down to less than a minute now. Irina Crush just played the move Rook to D8. Uh, did she play Rook to D8, to D8 Yes, she has way? played Rook to D8. And that is a sweet, sweet trick that Marish just showed. D7. What could be more natural than the move rook g7? And it walks into that haymaker, rook h1, rook g4. That's an easy, easy tactic uh, to fall into as well as to miss. Again, no. I think Victoria has been trying to draw this game, so she may be thinking after d7, rook g7, I'll just move my king up and we'll end up, you know, swapping a rook for a pawn each and I'll make my draw. And she has played c5 again. That kind uh, of move that we've seen a lot from her, going for the trades, 
instead of uh, uh, finding her winning chances, uh, C5. And she's getting down to 13 seconds before she made the move C5. Unbelievable. So after takes on C, Irina should be absolutely elated that she gets to trade she's off, able her, to think straight. She's, off her, her weak pawn. Her women's championship is in the balance, and she's got almost less than, she's got about a minute left on her clock. Right now, it's all about instinct. Right, and uh, nerves, nerves. C5 is nerves. definitely just a draw. That was not a good choice at all by her. Right, right. And B takes C5. What a relief it must be for Arena Crush to get rid of that pawn weakness and trade it off. Now she's probably thinking, okay, I'm in a four rook ending. Uh, not much I can do. I'm going to try to uh, try to uh, escort my G pawn down the board, and Black White is going to escort her D pawn down the board. And uh, Arena's probably thinking that uh, it's going to be a draw. And how about? Zatansky and Amkova, these players both have a lot of time left on the clock. Comparison, <laughs> five minutes to three minutes. And by the way, we've got an official result. Got a camp. She has defeated Jack Friedel. Three-way tie at the top of the U.S. Chess Championship. Wow. Got a Kamsky. We're going to have, not only are we going to have a playoff tomorrow, we are going to have a long playoff. So get ready, <laughs> guys. Strap in. It could be five or six hours um, oh my. playoff tomorrow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 They're gonna have to prepare a lot of chicken wings for you, Yasser. The, did we did we negotiate like overtime pay and uh, <laughs> Maurice? You're my agent in such matters. Uh, <laughs> Your overtime pay comes not only to get chicken wings, you also get sushi. So yes. There you go. <laughs> Yes. Oh, you're so, you're you're so cheap easy. Date, dude. <laughs> I am uh -uh. a cheap date. Uh-uh. I'm filing I... a protest. <laughs> Not only are we going to get a three-way playoff on the men's side, we're going to get at least a two-way. No, it's going to be a three-way three -way. playoff on the women's side as well after that last move uh, in the knee game, knee crush game. Three-way playoff both ways. But who has the better tiebreaker on the women's side? Irina we should, right? We forgot to check Irina on that. Irina should because Irina won her game against Tatev and Anna. Yes. She's two nothing. Yeah, so she clearly saw so Irina will be sitting pretty waiting for Light the other gotcha. two players. And guess what? The two players with the advantage of the tie break, they are winners from last year. Our defending so champions. they're the defending champions. They get to sit back and smile while the other two players suffer and think about what they're going to do to make the winners suffer some more. Well, so, the, only the only disadvantage there is that Irina doesn't get to prepare. She doesn't know who she's going to play. Whereas both Anna and Tatev know to prepare for two people. <laughs> that makes no that is sense. That's really a silver lining. Congratulations. <laughs> that was remarkable, Jen. I love it. I mean, there's two sides to every argument. There you have it. Not, <laughs> not really. That actually made no sense at all. I just real. But you, it was good. It you was forgot good. outside pass plot. That's I what happened know. when you no, analyzed chess for 100 talking. hours straight. We've been talking It's the 11th round. We we're can forgive, all, we can all forgive Jen for a couple of slips. <laughs> we're all grabbing. I've had one or two myself. Okay. But, yeah, I was uh, actually thinking that, I was thinking, and I was like, oh, yeah, they know who they're going to play, and then they only have to prepare for two people. And then <laughs> Irina has to only prepare for two people. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Pretty cool. Uh, Zatonsky, it's all right. it's all right. Zatonsky, do we have a result? We'll get it because, together. <laughs> because it really looks like it's heading to a result right here, right now. Uh, the breakthrough on the king side has come with g4. I think Anna is uh, prepared now to play knight uh, b4 to d3 and to deal with uh, the, oops, knight d3 uh, takes and to be able to prepare to deal with these past H pawns. Black will come over here, collect the pawn on A4, but Anna is securing the draw. Anna actually took the pawn because her knight can get uh, back in time anyway. Oh, wonderful. And Irina Crush and Victoria Nier are about to shake hands. We've got, we've got a, an end game that I think we've seen in another game, just pawn versus rook. It's totally over. In fact, they're about to play the king versus king because they want to show their fighting spirit. <laughs> <laughs> we okay. like that. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. So it, this is what we have seen. King takes rook on d6. Pawn g3 will come. King e5 will come. King h2 and rook takes. King takes. And a hearty hand clasp for a very, very hard-fought, dramatic final round. And Arena must be thinking, Darn, I beat my closest rival, Anna Zatonsky. I had the tournament in my hands. Now I've got a playoff. But on the other hand, when she reviews this game, she'll probably think to herself, 
wow, I was really lucky. Uh, things could have really gone wrong at Victoria. I can't, I can't imagine that, Yaz. Remember her position from the opening? Mm -hmm. She was completely winning, like completely. It was crushing. The king was on D2, sitting mm -hmm. there waiting to be shredded. Mm -hmm. She's going to be disgusted with herself. There's no, she's, she's, and the way she is, she's very hard on herself for not finding the right moves. She's going to be disgusted with herself. Even though she should have lost later. <laughs> <laughs> she's not going to say, yeah, look, she's going to be disgusted because she was winning, and then she's going to be disgusted because she allowed herself to be losing. And now she has to fight tomorrow. But uh, reality is reality on the chessboard. Right. Okay, well, and, and they gonna are going to play. They're going to continue playing king versus king for a few moves, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Queen first, and uh, no. thinking about the position for a moment. Well, you saw that uh, Arena had... Uh, Put the put her queen. And she made a queen. Yes. And there they go. The the game has been drawn. Wow. Irina Krush and Victoria Yuni. Irina Krush and Tate Babrahamia now tied for first in the U.S. Women's Chess Championship. Will with Tate Babrahamia? I'm sorry, with Anna Zatansky ready to catch up. Will they be joined by um, Anna Zatansky? So we have this position by Anna. Now it's Nemkova to play, I believe. And she will likely play the move knight b2, attacking white's knight, uh, hoping to promote the pawn. Obviously, you can't take the knight. You'll have to play knight f2. Then knight takes, knight takes, and all black has to do is bring her knight over uh, to the queen king side to sacrifice the knight. Should Instead, be. Instead, she played h2 first, but just a oh, move order. H2. Oh, just a move me. order difference. Knight f2, knight b2, threatening knight d3 jack. I'm sorry, what, what so happened? So she played h2 instead. Instantly. And then after knight f2, no. knight to b2 is also a double attack on a4 and threatening knight to b3 jack. I see, sorry. So that forces me to drop back with the king. Knight takes, king takes. Now it's much easier for me to bring over my knight to sacrifice it for the pawn. So and we have seen that on the board, knight b2 on the board, king g3. And we also have defending champion, Gada Kamsky. And I wonder if he knew about the tiebreak rule. Somebody must have checked them before, right? Well, I don't the, know. The, there's an angel over Gada's uh, shoulders in this championship. He'll tell us who she is. <laughs> Indeed, we are with the reigning champ, four-time champion, Gada Kamsky, after a strong, powerful victory in his game against Josh Friedel. Gotta welcome to the show. It's gotta feel good that you actually are still in it. Yeah, I was pretty surprised because um, the game went like up and down a lot and I got really lucky at the end in a way. Lucky? It looks like you played some powerful moves and just pushed your opponent off the board. Not really. Uh, my bishop, uh, Dark Sweat Bishop, was out of the game most of the game. And then I just got lucky when I, he managed to allow me the construction of putting the queen on a4 and bishop on g4, and then white is much better. After that, I was completely calm, of course. <laughs> yeah. So nervous going into the game. Were you watching the game between Akobian and, and Lenderman, keeping an eye on the proceedings during sure. the game? Sure, I was keeping an eye. That kind of made me a little bit thinking about other things uh, other than the game. But um, overall, um, I'm glad that I didn't make any blunders this time. Okay. So now you're tied for first which has been a while in coming. You've caught them at the end. Uh, do you know the tiebreak rules? Uh, well, according to the tiebreak rules, Carol just explained to me that uh, since I have a best tiebreak, because I had direct win against uh, Landerman, that means that Akobian and Landerman will be playing against each other first, and then I'll have to play the winner for the title. Did you know that before she told you? No. I <laughs> okay, because <laughs> Landerman didn't know it either. You guys just put your head down and, and play chess. Right. So. This is a good situation for you. What do you feel are your chances going into the tiebreak day? They just became much better. <laughs> so, yeah. See, so you crack a smile for, for the first time here. Right. Uh, I mean, it's got to be tough on those guys. You've played in the Armageddon before, Armageddon game. Any suggestions to them as to what the bid, the best bid might be for, for these two players? Well, every time it's like a first time, so there is no, no, no way to explain things unless you actually play them. So it's going to be a really exciting playoffs, and judging by what I have just seen in women's uh, games, it seems to be coming to the playoffs as well. So this yes. can be a really exciting day tomorrow. It's never happened before at the U.S. Championships, this kind of playoff system. Will you be watching the game between Akobian and Linderman? 
I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know. Of course. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we wish you luck in uh, your games and see you tomorrow. Absolutely. Four-time champ Gadakowski did what he had to do, and now he's all set in a sweet position for the playoffs tomorrow. Guys? Thank you, Maurice. I, I consider uh, Gada one of the world-class rapid chess players, and so that was why I'm making him, and everybody else here seems to be making him such a clear favorite in uh, the situation. But, wow, um, he didn't, he, Gada will be the first to tell you, he didn't impress uh, either himself or any of us, but he did what he had to do, which was win a crucial game, which is the same thing that Arena had to do when she fa faced Anna, and that's why they're the defending champions and why they're the champions in the first place. I, I've always said that uh, people who win in must-win situations are the people who win the championships. Right. It's that simple. And yet, guys, uh, we had two big champions in Arena and Anna, and they had to win to, to win the championship. And they fall to the critical moment, and it was Abraham Ian who had to win, just like Gada uh, did. It, in fact, Abraham Ian's path is so much more unlikely. We were chatting about it that this was possible, so much more unlikely because Anna and Irina did not play each other in the last round. So it wasn't one draw that, pr that produced the two results, so to speak, both Akobian with a half and Lenderman with a half. She needed two draws to happen to have a chance, and her two opponents were playing players much lower down on the rating scale. What are the odds of this particular result? Of course, the odds are worse to see two zeros and she winning the sh her winning the championship, but the odds of this result are also pretty low. I mean, I would have given this, I don't know, 25% maybe? Mm -hmm. Something like that happening, the two draws. But Anna, uh, Anna didn't win, Irina didn't win, and, I mean, Anna is still playing, but we suspect this is an easy draw. And that means that Tatev, by winning her game in dominant fashion at the end, she's got a chance to win it all. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty impressive place to be, of course. Tall order, because guess what? She's got Anna again, and then she has to play against Irina, and that's not going to be easy. But if you're going to become the U.S. champion, might as well beat the woman who's four-time champ and the woman who's five-time champ to prove yourself at the tape. Guys? Well, this will be pretty nice. fascinating to, to recap. It's how 45-minute Armageddon game is going to start both three-player matches, right? So we're going to see Anna and Tatev play a 45-minute game, Armageddon game, no increment or delay as far as I know. Right. And they're going to bid to see who will get the black and the draw lads. Okay. And the, in the past, we've had a five-second increment in that game. So without it, the bids are going to be higher. Right. You can't bid as low as 20 minutes if there's no increment. That's crazy. Right. So you're pretty good at game theory. You've you got to imagine yourself in the situation. You want to play black and to take the draw odds, I suppose. How low would you bid? Would you bid, for example, 30 minutes? Would you be willing to take one third uh, of I your think, time less? No, 30 is, it depends on, it depends on what type of, type of player you are and how much you like white, clearly. Mm -hmm. But I think 30, I think those are the bids that we might see, something around in that 31, range. 33. Mm -hmm. I think we'll see something in that range for okay. both players, yeah. Okay, because uh, frankly, it's nice to be white too. You know what you have right. to do, all the pressure's on you. Uh, to win, that's and it. Of course, win or go home. And course, in Blitz, uh, draws are a little bit less likely, mm -hmm. so you don't have to worry about that result quite as much as you would have to in a classical time game. Right. And so, we're, we're, some homework for the players who are going to be um, bidding, <laughs> and that's a, a tough thing. They don't know which color to prepare for. Right. Because their opponent, of course, could always outbid them. Right. Or and underbid them, rather. And Maurice, you're quick. Uh, well, actually, quick. Maurice oh, is sorry. getting set up with. I'm uh, sorry. Irina Crush, who will talk about her draw in this game and time for first in the women's championship and likely a three-way playoff tomorrow. Um, I guess there's no handshake yet in the Anna Zatansky game. No, the one final trick in the position uh, would be that after knight h3 check, the one move you absolutely, absolutely cannot do is king f3. Unless you want to make enemies with Irina <laughs> and Katev for the rest of your, your life. life. 
my G5 would force a trade. I'll never speak to you again. Yeah, I'll never speak to you again. Uh, but it, after knight h3 check, the uh, simple and correct king uh, to g3 would And they're also playing king versus king. Mm -hmm. Oh, An wow. unbelievable round. Actually, we saw knight versus king and rook versus king today in the Women's Chess Championship. Both players literally wiping off the board. Exhausting their chances. That's what we it's We love like. it. Right. And tomorrow we are gonna see a three-way playoff in the Women's Championship. And here we have one of the players, actually the defending champion, the only Grandmaster in the field, and she beat both of the players who are gonna be in the playoff. No, 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 Drew oh, Drew versus Tatev, right. She drew versus Tatev, and Anna won versus Tatev. Right. But she lost versus Irina, so Irina has one and a half, and Anna only has one and one. Okay. Right? So that's why Irina Cross has the better tie breaks and will be seated into the final. And she's with Maurice Ashley. Indeed, with Grandmaster Irina Crush, after a tough game, Irina, it looked like you were winning to all rights, and then it evaporated. What are your thoughts about the game? Yeah, well, it's a, it's a disappointing uh, game, I think, because certainly I felt like my position around... Um, let's see, where were we? Like, let's say around here was already preferable. And, um, okay, in this moment, it's kind of a critical moment. For some reason, white, instead of, let's say, developing a piece, I was expecting something like 92. Um, oh, I still preferred black. You know, white went for the speculative move, knight of six, and I had seen that. Um, I really didn't think this move was going to be dangerous at all for black because uh, white has no pieces developed. Um, so I was feeling, you know, very happy here. And, uh, um, so rook g8 seemed reasonable. Um, h7, yeah. Well, what, what were yeah. you feeling? Were you thinking you were going to win right now? Did you think? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, knew it was my, I knew my position was just, you know, winning. I just, uh, I don't know, know really what happened. Like this moment, this position that we went for, like after ef5, I really just thought that this would be. Um, that this was not a tenable position for white with those pieces on a1 and c1, but somehow after king d2, I just couldn't find um, a way to win the game. I mean, yeah, the computer shows its computer line. Just, um, yeah, I guess that's quite good. c4, I should have played somewhere. Well, actually, but there's a miracle move here for her that uh, maybe we could look at this yeah. position. Did you look at the move rook g7? Yeah, of course. I mean, but after queen f4. Did you look at queen f5? Well, yeah, the line queen f5 was also something I was concerned about. Well, this is, about. This is the crazy line, yeah, actually. Yeah, I didn't see this bishop c8. Right, bishop c8, this check, and yeah. after this move, yeah. this impossible move, queen h6, which just makes wow, the king. Wow, that's nice. I didn't, of course, okay, that's a very nice computer line. Yeah, I didn't see bishop c8. Um, I mean, you, I guess you have to see a lot of geometrical motifs here in order to win for black. Like, um, so it wasn't, it wasn't that easy. Um, yeah, because, yeah, actually, rook g7, queen f5, I just didn't really see exactly what I had here. And it's not and it turns out bishop clear. c8 is the only way yeah, to really bishop keep C8. an advantage. Yeah, I mean, queen e6, and the thing is, you have to rook g1, rook h7, queen f4. It's just not so easy to win for black. I mean, of course, black is better, but in the end, you know, I just wasn't sure what to do, maybe. And uh, my own king is pretty weak. There's not much to yeah. do. The, the knight is very strong, and his a4 move is coming. Yeah, eventually. like uh, so. You know, the computer is starting to show like something retreating the bishop, which is eventually what I wound up doing. Um, but yeah, I mean that was disappointing because yeah, the position was winning, but I just didn't find find the win. And um, yeah, the end game. I'm sure. Yes, I know. I there was one moment she could have won, at least one. Uh, like a little bit further. Yeah, we did look at we did look at those moves, and it looked yeah. like she had a There's real edge. There's a move edge. g6 somewhere, isn't there? Um, Even at the end, she could have played yeah. d7, and you, you was would have been hard for you to defend. So if we may, let's not. Yeah, I know you okay. want to focus on the game. You can do yeah, that sure. later. Uh, what are your What are your thoughts now? You're tied. Your your closest rival, thankfully, only drew. Yeah. And now you're in a three way playoff. Do you know the rules of the playoff, by the way? I well, I heard uh, Jen and Yasser talking about the fact that I would be seated into the, into the final match um, and that Anna and Tatev would be playing the first, first match. So that sounds pretty good, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a lot harder, I know, to play uh, two matches than one. Um, but, yeah, so, you know, well, you know, of course I would have hoped to win the championship at this point. And, um, but you got to take what you get. You know, I could also say I'm lucky, first of all, that I didn't lose my position at the end. Um, also, that Anna didn't win. You know, so 
um, it's really it's really okay. You know, I'm fine playing a rapid tiebreak. I've had uh, a number of experiences with that, so I know what it's about, and um, just try to play better tomorrow. How have those rapids gone for you? Generally, quite decently. Yeah, and you know, I just came back from playing a rapid tournament in a Hantemansisk, so I got quite a lot of practice with rapid chess, um, and. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually, actually I'm kind of looking forward to it, you know. Why not try to win the championship in a direct encounter with your closest competitors? Excellent. Well, we wish you luck in tomorrow's games. Will you be watching the game with uh, Tatev and, and Anna? Oh, probably not. No. <laughs> so how will you know the result? Someone else will, will know. <laughs> Indeed. Well, congratulations, and we look forward to watching you play tomorrow for the Thank championship. Thank you, Maurice. Irina Crush, five-time champion, a chance to win her sixth title tomorrow after her main rivals duke it out here at the U.S. Women's Championships. Guys? That's right. Anna Zatonsky and Tatevar Abrahamian will be playing the first match for the chance to play the defending champion at Irina. It kind of works out perfectly, doesn't it? Right. And um, Veruja Nikovian and um, Lenderman will be playing for the chance to play Gata Kamsky. So the defending champions at the top of the heap will both of them keep their titles. That is what we will find out tomorrow. But what a round. What a round of excitement, of yeah. drama. It had everything. Uh, Rena winning, Anna winning, Rena losing, Anna losing, both draws. Wow. I can t and Potential playoffs? Definite playoffs. 1 p.m. tomorrow at Central Standard Time. Um, you know, one interesting thing. I'm not sure who I like in... Tatev Abrahamian's match against Anna Zatonsky because despite the fact that Anna, of course, has a much higher rating and, and also... great experience. Great experience. Abrahamian, known for her blitz skills, in fact, one of our sponsors, Chess.com, had what they call a death match. Ooh. Tatev Abrahamian came on, out on top versus Anna Zatonsky. But, but that's a blitz match, that's right? That's five minute, three minute, and one minute, I wow. believe. Wow. Yeah. What's their individual heads up score? Who has the the better of those two players between? Well, I think in, in in classical games, I'm pretty sure that Zidansky does, but we can double check that. Uh, but yeah, the the blitz and the rapid. Well, I guess it's a rapid game. Yeah. But I still think that um, Tatev Abrahamian. I don't think that she's a big underdog in this match. I think it's pretty close to call. Exactly, and it will be about nerves too. Nerves, good play, and wow, do they have the energy? By the way, too. To uh, also beat <laughs> Irina. Yeah. So that's a good question. I mean, it, it's it's a tall, tall order, and that's why the rules are structured also because there's a time constraint. Right. That you we don't can't have play them too play rapid. two rapids followed by but another playoff only for the chance to play Irina. So. Right, because they end up exhausting themselves after three or four uh, battles and three hours of exactly. play. Exactly, and here we've fair. got, and here's what tomorrow looks like. Kobian and Lenderman, Armageddon match. Winner plays Gata Kamsky, and okay, this one Aubrey is reversed Anne. for the ladies. Uh, Zatansky and Abrahamian, Armageddon match to play against Crash. Oh. And uh, Irina liked I really liked the playoff rules. She fact, was agreeable. Like, yeah. she, she did the math a lot faster than me. She was like, yeah, one match is better than two. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And may I point out that there was a classic matchup between uh, these two players, Zatonsky and uh, and Abrahamian for the title. Was it three years ago? Or was it 2010? Where they played a vintage match, amazing match. Uh, we were on the edges of our seats calling that one, and uh, ev eventually Zatonsky proved to be the victor in that one. So not at all clear that uh, Abrahamian has any advantage against this player. They are just going to be in a dogfight tomorrow, no question about it. I believe that was in 2011, and I think that Tatev Abrahamian's approved a lot since then. Mm -hmm. She's gotten her IM title, or she's gotten all her IM norms, and... A lot, a lot more experience on her belt. So, right. and she, even in that match, right. she was very close to capturing the title. So, I think it's really very clo too close to call, actually. Anna Zatonsky. Yeah. Okay, really, if I had to put my money on it, I'd probably go with Anna. But it's very close, I think. I'll go with Anna and, and for another reason. Anna came to the event rusty. She hadn't, she, by her own admission, she had not played enough. And now the tournament's over, and. You know, she's got her feeling back. She knows how the pieces move again. And so hopefully the rust is gone, and tomorrow is just going to be a great match. But 
Anna's in our studio yeah, we'll, we'll talk with her in just to a, just uh, a minute and tell can, us how she feels. Yeah, uh, we've got uh, Anna Tatonsky. She's with Maurice Ashley, and uh, she'll be playing a three-way playoff tomorrow as well. In a topsy-turvy game. Wow. Thanks, guys. I am with Anna Zatonsky after a terrific battle where she managed to save the game against Katarina Nemkova. Anna, that was war. I mean, you had yeah. to win to go win the championship, and all of a sudden it looked like you were in trouble, maybe, and then you had to save yourself. What are your thoughts about the game? Uh, um, uh, first of all, I think I had a good position uh, from opening, and I messed up something, um, just uh, blunders and tactics, and uh, I thought strategically very good position for me. And uh, of course, probably I should be happy to save the game, but in the end I was playing for win, as you could see this in this end game. Uh, so it was some chances for me to win, and probably F3 it was a good try to, to make a draw for sure, to draw the game. And uh, she, sh she had to find like a couple of precise moves to draw the game. She played so, really so well. So by, 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 by the end, I was a little bit unhappy. <laughs> yeah. She played really well this championship. I mean, her first time, she, she had a solid result. But now what it's really about is you, Tatev, and Irina. I mean, this is, this is uh, the people that we expect at the end of the championships. It's happened now. What are your thoughts going into tomorrow's matchup? You have to play Tatev first, first of all, with that matchup. You, uh -huh. played, her in two, you played her two years ago uh -huh. for the championship. What do you think about that game? Okay, I'm still thinking about my previous game, which I just finished. <laughs> I didn't know I, had, I have to play Tatev uh, first. And... Uh, I thought my uh, burger is better, but I'm not sure. Maybe I'm wrong. It's not a, it's not a burger, burger tie break. It's head-to-head. And ah, head-to-head yes, have you yeah, losing why, against yeah, Arena. Why, yeah. so, and, um, so, okay. <laughs> I, need to, I, I need to read how like, we are playing, which time control, and how many games. Oh, so you don't know the rules of the tie break. No, no, but a three-way three -way tie break, I don't know. And, well, uh, the three-way tie break has you. And I forgot last year I didn't play tie breaks. So I'm not sure. <laughs> well, you have to play an Armageddon game against Tate where you Armageddon bid. Armageddon game? Where you <laughs> yes. Right away? Right away, uh -huh. where you bid to see who gets black, uh -huh. and black has draw odds. So that's the situation oh, before you yes, go and yes, play yes. Arena. Mm-hmm. Good. So <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts there? Uh, in uh, how many minutes? It's like between... Uh, 45 minutes. You have to bid to see who has the lower plus time. Five, plus five uh, minutes. Uh. No plus five anything. No, no increment, no, no second. No increment, no. Wow. <laughs> it's brutal here at no, the no, championship. But, but, but I mean, no the increment after move 60 or anything? Nothing. Not nothing? that we know. Wow. Not, <laughs> nothing that we know. <laughs> it's American chess here. Yeah, but this new two, two years also ago was also American chess. Yeah. <laughs> they really want to stick it to the players this time yeah, really have so a challenge. What are your thoughts? Yeah, probably I should get our uh, white in 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you played Tatev many times before. Uh, in this tournament you played her in fact yes. and defeated her in the in the in mm -hmm. tournament what do you think about your chances against a, a player like that <laughs> uh, actually she's a very strong rapid uh, chess player so i think it's uh, it's it will be not easier so i think um uh, she, she she she's really i played her in on chess.com blitz match and i think uh, she defeated me and uh, i don't know i think it's chances are equal uh, if Tatev will beat me, I think her chances are probably higher versus Serena because she's really good in rapid chess. Yeah. Wow, that's I'm a big claim. I'm impressed. Yeah. That's a big And especially claim. the person who is like last one to catch leaders has such certain. <laughs> Indeed, we saw it happen on the men's side. What do you think of Gata Komsky's chances? Because he's in the exact same situation. He uh -huh. caught the two men, and now he has to sit out and watch the two of them play. Wow. <laughs> okay, then no, uh, it's so. Uh, I think he has good chances to win U.S. championship again. It's a little bit strange way for him, not like last year. <laughs> Indeed, yes. where he dominated. So what do you do to prepare for your last round? Uh, probably I will uh, get a good sleep and rest because uh, I, like my level of energy is really low. So it's, I need to really <laughs> rest, <laughs> sleep, and uh, this is probably about it. So it's well, we wish you the best in t tomorrow's matchups, and uh, we'll be calling your games. You've been a terrific fighter for these championships, so thanks very much. Yeah, thanks. Anna Zatonsky, four-time champion, looking to be a fifth-time champion, but with some severe obstacles in her way for the women's championship. Guys?
I'm so excited. I can't wait for tomorrow. <laughs> I, want, I want something it's to happen going now. It's like, really exciting. Like you know, let's just play drawing, them now. You know, Anna, like, you're wow. okay playing now, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> she will take a break. Uh, but we'll, we'll be back tomorrow. Fantastic. Yeah, this One is going to be very exciting. So a game 45 Armageddon match. No increment. No increment. This, no delay. So they're going to bid on how much time they're willing to take black and draw odds. Right. Meanwhile, whoever wins that match will play against Irina and Gata, respectively. Mm -hmm. And that match will be a two-game rapid match. So that's a game 25 with the five-second increment. And then, if that match is split, another Armageddon. Gotcha. So you guys do the math real quick. Our maximum time that we're going to be here tomorrow with you is about five hours, five and a half with breaks, max, perhaps. Max. That would be the maximum. That's if we go to the second Armageddon in one of the games. But you know what? That's pretty likely that at least one of the games will end in the second Armageddon. Mm -hmm. Because a 1-1 one, one is a typical score and in a two-game so match. And they're so close. And they're so closely matched. My yeah. math for that is good. There's more ways to get 1-1 one, one than there <laughs> are to get did. other scores. Scores. And we got a final thought from Maurice. I love it. I mean, it means work for us another day. But who doesn't want to call the U.S. championships on the final day with all to play for, guaranteed winner. You remember back in the days, yes, you used to do the gentlemanly ties at the top. It was a three-way, four-way tie at the top of the championships. Uh-uh, those days are gone, and we will see a winner tomorrow, a single winner come out of this championships and rightfully call themselves U.S. champion and U.S. women's champion. So I'm really looking forward to working, guys. How are we going to call the games? We've got side-by-side -side Armageddon games going on, and then, the, and then the championship games. It's going to be an incredible day. It is going to be yeah. wild. You're definitely not going to want to miss that. What about you, Yasser? Do you have a final thought, prediction? What, what's on your mind? I would actually like to ask our audience to uh, tell me what they think the winning bid should be. I would like to get a wide sampling of uh, the uh, bidding process. Would you bid 30 minutes or less if to take the black? That would be the question I would ask. Would you be willing to give up 15 minutes and take the draw odds? You still didn't answer the question. Though, what? Said, final thoughts. Who's going to win? Gata, Irina. Gata and Irina. That's so easy, though. Hey, you asked me. I, 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 got, I got the right to pick first, so I went with the defending champions. I'm How about easy. in the first match? Very, very, very hard. I'm going to go with a Kobian. And I didn't like Anna's uh, level of self-confidence, but on the same hand, she's a little bit uh, self-deprecating. She doesn't really it put herself out there. It might not be totally there. honest. I mean, not in a bad way, but just but, kind of like, got yeah. trying to be polite almost in the right. opposition. Right, exactly. The fact that a friend of hers, I believe. Right, but I think Anna, I think Anna's going to, we're going to see Irina Anna once again. These ladies have nine championship rings between them, and they're, they're, they're going to have a tenth. I think I'm going to go the opposite and take Alex and Patev because Alex has been playing pretty quickly in this tournament. I know Rapid's a different animal than a regular time control, but I'm going to take Alex, who's been confident and aggressive, and I'm going to take Patev because I know she practices a lot of Blitz and Rapid. Uh, just quickly, guys, I think that a lot depends on who gets black in the lindeman Akobian matchup. I think if Akobian gets black, I think he goes through. He's so solid. I don't think he wants to have to win the last game. That, I think, will be a challenge for him. If Lenderman wins the bid and gets black, he's young, he's quick, he's confident. I think that he'll be thinking, you're, I'll be playing for the win, and I don't think you're going to beat me with that solid style. And I think it's a huge factor who gets black in that Armageddon game. If Akobian gets it, it's going to be real hard to break that solidity. But if Lenderman gets it, I think that Lenderman goes through. And... Uh, so who knows unless we know the bid. And then the other one, the matchup, I've got to go with Anna. I mean, she's been shaky. Tatev hasn't been brilliant herself. And I think that the time's not going to matter. She's just a great champion. All right. Well, it's all going down tomorrow. This is the most dramatic U.S. Chess Championship I've ever seen. I am really grateful to be a part of it. And I just hope that all of you have the time carved out tomorrow to watch what is going to be one of the most thrilling finales to the U.S. Championships and the U.S. Women's Chess Championship in chess history. We'll be here 1 o'clock Central Standard Time, 2 Eastern. Don't miss it. It's only going to happen once.